Welcome to Cutting the Ball in the Post Truth Apocalypse. I'm Ben, as always. I'm hanging out with Mike. Hello. Claire. Hello. And Pete. <laughs> Hello. A very hoarse Claire. What did you do at the weekend, Claire, for New Year's Eve? You and Pete. We went to London, baby. We went to watch the fireworks and deep throated it all the way. <laughs> the, the Not beer. with me. <laughs> <laughs> the beer, that is. The beer and the. Bags and the so in English, what she was cigarettes. saying was cigarettes and <laughs> spliffs. Should we interpret that all? <laughs> yeah, I think you picked her up all right. If you can't hear Claire, she's got no voice, but she's here regardless. Yeah, all right. Anyway, today, as I thought, we did the god. We did death the other week, didn't we? We did the gods of death. We did. And I thought, let's change it up. Let's do actually something fairly fluffy, and it's the creation. Okay. We've gone from death to life and presumably back again. Hmm. So I thought we'd have a, have a look at that because there's some really fucking old ones and they usually involve some kind of corners, something metal along the way. Obviously, we're not going to do Christianity because that one sucks a bit. Hmm. Oh, the snake's cool. Could we just say an RIP? Oh, yeah. The fucking LP. Who's dead now? Wayne Rooney. Well, oh, he's not dead, career. but his career is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the man swings Sorry, from... Sorry, I, I had to put that in. The man swings from a tyre. Who was your... Oh, yeah. Yeah, R.A.P. John Pilger. Investigative journalist, Australian. Nice man. He, he was standing up for Assange. One of the only few that would. I don't think anybody you're talking to here will I've know who that man is. Well, he died recently. Okay. I've never heard of him. Maybe yeah. I'd know his face, maybe? Maybe, or... maybe his work. I doubt that. I more think, you'll, like, know, more, I more think you'll know his not. face before he knows his yeah. work. What, anyway, are you, what are you saying? I'm saying that you're not familiar with the work of John Pilger. You're correct. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened with Rooney? He got fired. Oh, well, he, he left. Or No, he was sacked. He was sacked. Yeah, he was he sacked. Done? He was manager of Birmingham City. And it's been a whole saga on the job for Birmingham City. 13 weeks some new ago. Owners. It's up to that point, they've been doing really well for it, the best they've done in years under another manager. But they sacked to a point Wayne Rooney, who won three games in 15, lasted 13 weeks, and swings from a tyre when, rec- when he's at home. And they put him in, they sacked the other guy because he was a nobody, and they wanted a big name. And it's backfired on him, hasn't it? Big style. And the club's time. owned by the, the American... Tom Brady or something. Yeah, maybe we should give Birmingham City a, an RIP as well. <laughs> the football club. <laughs> oh, they've been going for a while. We've still got SoundCloud issues with the analytics. But people have been listening, we hope. People have been listening, that's good. Yeah, they have, but we don't know who, unfortunately, because SoundCloud is shit and still haven't fixed it. God damn. Right. Let's thank do some... you, well, yeah, thank you to all the listeners. Thank you anyway, yeah. Follow us on Facebook at Cutting the Bull in the Post Through the Apocalypse. YouTube, Apocalypse Bull, and SoundCloud, and Spotify, and all other podcasting platforms. It's Cutting Through the Bull in the PTA. Thanks for listening. Actually, Mike, I have a small reading. Oh. You know that you sent me that internet article last night, and then I sent you the text. Oh, you have to remind me now. What did I send you? <laughs> it was uh, about abandoning your family made easy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, well, it, the, the, it had an interesting introduction, that post, and I think it needs recognising... It's time for a fresh start. Scream into a breeze, strip to your nethers and bathe in the wet and the arctic fluid of new beginnings. Kiss a tree, embrace a stalk, for you have been reborn in the image of Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously didn't read that bit. I you did not. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a cult leader or a god now and I'm not sure which. I'm going with the cult leader. Yeah. <laughs> One man cult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just remember your own advice. <laughs> Don't join a cult. <laughs> Don't drink a cult. Wait, no. <laughs> it's just something about starting a cult. No, I know. I've just I've acquired just... one from somewhere. I'm, I'm going more along the lines of. Don't drink the flavour aid. No, I've just, I've just acquired one from somewhere. I didn't even know about it, but all of a sudden it appears that I am their figurehead. Maybe it was Big Ben. I doubt it. Or. Mr. Ben. No, it wasn't yeah. two ends. Gentle Ben? He's a bear. Gentle Ben. Big bear. He's a bear. Gentle Ben. <laughs> anyway, creation myths. Yeah, that's pretty much. <laughs> for as long as humans have existed, we have sought to explain the mysteries of the universe and our place within it. Creation myths attempt to explain the origins of the world, humanity, and the divine. And many of these myths have been passed down orally. You know all about that, Claire. Hey. <laughs> For thousands of years, others have been preserved in ancient texts and artefacts. Sorry, and Mike. 
Thank you. Despite the differences in language, culture, and geography, creation myths often share common themes and motifs, such as the role of a divine creator, the struggle between chaos and order, and the emergence of humanity. So we're going to look at these. Some of the oldest. We're going to look at the oldest ones now. Okay. So the Norse created in the 1200s. Ben Norse mythology. Not that old. It's pretty old. It's got to be well, it's older, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Twelve hundreds is only what eight hundred years ago. As it was BC. It says twelve hundreds. Yeah, it? it does. Can't be that, can it? So instead of like Adam and Eve, we talk that they, they made their own. Or? Yeah. Well, Christianity's only been around for a bit, hasn't it? Yeah. Two thousand years. There's been uh, yeah. So there's been other. There's been a lot more creation myths than just Adam and Eve. Mm. We all know Adam and Eve because obviously we all got brought up in a Western Christian society. No, it's Adam and Steve. It could be <laughs> if you want it. If you want it to be, it can be. Can be whatever you want. Although I'd imagine Don't the church. Really I'd imagine the church isn't down for Adam and Steve. <laughs> but then again, you can say, "Oh, Adam and Steve wouldn't have got very far." But oh man, it was wasn't wasn't Adam and Eve's kids like Cain and Abel? So explain to me if anyone's getting on from there. Guess they're banging their mom. Weren't Cain and Abel because they're in year one, aren't they? Which is a bit of a Joe Connell back shit. It, the Adam and Eve. And oh, I don't know. I, I did it go from four to, you know, four hundred. Well, incest. Well, a lot, yeah, of it. <laughs> a lot of incest going on. <laughs> Had to be, didn't they? No. no. Well, but it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. It Thankfully, we live in a in a. Well, there must have there must have been at least an Adam and Eve and a Bob and Meredith. No, <laughs> right. If we come from like. Monkeys. Monkeys. They'd yeah. be like a, a generation of them, wouldn't they? There wasn't Eve, apparently, from what I gather. Yeah, there would have been the first human. Would have been born from a proto-human. From a monkey. Whatever the one before human was. Yeah, I think they just got a little bit more hairless. Well, that's it. No, that's it. That's <laughs> that all it. the difference is. Each yeah. time the baby was born. A bit more, right, right. Each time a baby was born, it was slightly less hairy and slightly more upright I guess and it doesn't just happen overnight does it it's no. generations so yeah, it's yeah. eventually we you know climate changes so you need less hair so the less hairy people survive and pass their genes on and then people get smarter and the smart people survive because they can make fire and cook meat and, and start wearing clothes start wearing clothes and mm. you know it's all right survival of the fittest isn't it in Norse mythology, the world began as a primordial void known as Gunigap. I'm not going to be very good at some of the transla- some of the pronunciations today. Going to throw yeah. that out there. The first being to emerge in the void was Ymir. Why you? Oh God! I just say it. Why me? You me? You A giant made of ice. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Ymir was slain by Odin and his brothers, who used his body to create the world. They fashioned the earth from his flesh, the sky from his skull, and the oceans from his blood. Oh, metal. Wow. <laughs> That's a metal album if I ever heard one. Mm-hmm. Man, this isn't so light and fluffy, is it? We've got death in the first one. How did they just fashion them? The gods, I guess. Oh. They just went, you're big, Mr. Giant. Yeah. I'm going to turn you into a world. Yeah, yeah I can't get behind that. It doesn't really make sense, does it? No. Nah. I don't think many of these are going to, to be honest with you. No, oh, OK. From the sparks and embers of Messelheim, the realm of fire, they created the sun, moon and stars. And then they said, you know what, let's create some humans. Ask and Embla from that two trees. That was first mistake. <laughs> they found <laughs> on the shore. Are you suggesting there was a mistake, Mike? The human race is a mistake? No. Odin gave them life and intelligence, while his brothers gave them physical attributes. The Norse creation myth portrays a world born out of chaos and violence... With the gods using the remains of a primordial giant to bring order to the cosmos. It reflects the harsh and unpredictable nature of the Norse world and the importance of strength, cunning and bravery in the face of adversity. Positive message? Yeah, I think there's a theme running through all these, probably. Well, they're all bullshit. <sighs> well, that and the fact that bringing order out of chaos. Well, yeah. Hey, did you know the bullshit, Pete? You weren't there at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and neither was any person that wrote these articles. You, you know, you ever go back in time and start selling with the Egyptians' guns? With my AK. Go back a bit further. I will, yeah, no worries. 
these are the first people, I guess, to question where everything came from. They've got this new intelligence, and well, that's it, isn't it? You're like, you're like, well, did all this yeah. get here? Well, they're just accepting it because animals don't think like that, do they? They just are in the moment, and that's it. I should imagine we were quite in the moment when, like, you know, back, back, back in yeah, the day yeah, yeah, yeah. before we started speaking and, and dialect and all that yeah. lot, where we were all a bit, you know, ooh, 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 a bit grunty. Yeah. Well, we'd have to have speech first. Right. Then again, who's to say what the grunts meant? Exactly. Hinduism's pretty old, isn't it? 1500 BCE, the Hindu creation myth. Yeah. It's one of the oldest, isn't it? The sixth oldest. What does the E stand for? You know what? I've no idea. I think you just throw it on there sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it does mean something, but I forget what it means now. Before oh, Christ's I... erection? I think you got to use the Roman calendar. <laughs> I'm thinking about Rome a lot again this week. <laughs> I like the Hindu gods, though, because they're kind of trippy. No disrespect to any Hindus or anything, but you've all got multiple arms and heads. It's fucking cool. Yeah. The Hindu creation myth begins with the existing... Un- sorry, it begins with the universe existing in a state of chaos and darkness with no form or structure. The god Brahma emerged in this chaos, like, came in like a wrecking ball, presumably, <laughs> and created the universe by separating the elements of earth, water, fire, air and ether. I'm assuming that's not the, like, drug. No. <laughs> yeah, but I'm on ether. <laughs> Brahma then created the first living beings, the gods and the demons. However, the gods and the demons could not coexist peacefully, and they fought a great battle with the gods emerging victorious. And the gods then asked Brahma to create humans to worship and serve them. Well, that kind of sucks. But it doesn't, but at the same time it does. Brahma created the first humans, but they were imperfect and lacked knowledge and understanding. What's changed? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You'd argue it hasn't, has it? But anyway, apparently the gods gave them the Vedas, a collection of sacred texts, and taught them how to perform rituals and ceremonies to worship them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, it's all about the worship of the Hindu gods. Well, I kind of respect that a bit more. It's like they're kings, they're fickle and powerful, and if you please them, they'll do stuff for you. Or help you out. And I can respect that a bit more than, well, if he gives you. <laughs> can you? Yeah, but me, can he? Christian God. In the New well, Testament, yeah. anyway. In the old one, he's angry and vengeful. No, the other way round. It, oh, no, it's right. Yeah, yeah, old, old Testament, Testament angry, yeah. vengeful. New Testament, all nice yeah. and forgiving and... Is there any more myths that are a bit more scientific that are actually palatable? No, it was because science was myths. a thing, was it? But then, why the myths? Isn't it? Science is only what three hundred years old, something like that. Fifteen hundreds ish, would you argue? Yeah. Renaissance. I was thinking about when you know, think back alchemy, to Newton, doesn't it? Well, modern science modern goes science. back to Newton, which was sixteen hundreds, wasn't it? Ish. No, but didn't any one of these people back in the day that were thinking these myths? Think anything close to science? No. The ancient Greeks are probably your closest, though I can't comment on the Mesopotamians because I don't know all that much about their civilization. Maybe physics, as in like like mathematical building well, the, that the kind Greeks of invented science, science maths, didn't they? that yeah. kind of side of physics, science. But I wouldn't say none of them choose monkeys. Or no, no, no one thought that until Darwin. Was yeah, only two hundred years ago. For a long so they time, all just, we they lived, all just thought they, we they, lived they, in the they, darkness. They've all just thought God. Yeah. yeah. That's that's human history until, like Ben says, the sixteen hundreds and Renaissance and. Yeah, Newton invented yeah. modern science and gravity. Yeah, people have like fourteen something Copernicus figured out that the Earth revolves around the sun and, and was locked up in a castle. The no, no, he was locked up uh, in a castle in Poland. He was the one that was burnt in the stake. Yeah, I was Galileo. Gal- is it Galileo? They allowed a lot of these guys to be under house arrest, but they just burnt their writings he instead. Couldn't question the Bible. Yeah, he did. You were yeah. seen as a witch or whatever, and a wizard and yeah. sent to death. Oh, he used to heresy, Heret- isn't it? Yeah, yeah heretic. heretic. I suppose it would be very outlandish thought, wouldn't it? Yeah. The scientists got really clever and started writing stuff on what was essentially like really thin paper. So if they were caught, they could throw it in a fountain and it dissolve, and no one had. Ooh. See what it was. 
Oh, that's where the Illuminati comes from, basically. The other scientists have got repressed from the church. Hmm. But these illuminated ones, it went into hiding. But let's go back to Mesopotamia. How old is this one, right? 1600 BC. That's pretty fucking old. Yeah. So the Eridu Genesis is an ancient Mesopotamian creation myth describing the world's origins and humanity. It begins with the gods and Enki, the god of wisdom, creating a home for them on Earth. And Enki then created humans out of clay and gave them the task of serving the gods. A lot of... Serving the gods. Serving the gods in this, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of rich and powerful people who are priests saying, yeah, you just don't question stuff, just worship the gods. Give us your money. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Enki ties into UFO mythology, to be fair. What is it? Yeah, and, and Atlantis a little bit. There's a cool. complicated theory about that, but yeah, the name does crop up. Enki then goes, well, humans became too numerous and noisy as time passed. Man, I do feel they're fucking paid on that. <laughs> noisy, especially. <laughs> Annoying the gods, I can see that, yeah. Yeah, I can see it. And the gods decided to send a flood to destroy humanity. But Enki warned one man, Zivasuda, of the impending disaster and instructed him to build a boat to save him and his family. Mm. Anyone know what? Is anyone, spell, is anyone, anyone getting any deja vu with you? Yeah. There's a lot of myths and flood every, floods in it, isn't there? Yeah, what's weird is that every kind of every ancient culture has a flood myth. So it just oh. suggests there must have been some kind of flood. flood. <laughs> yeah, we had the tsunami, didn't we? You know. Not not all of us, but a few years ago, wasn't it? The tsunami. Mm. They'd have made a flood myth out of that had we not just known it was a fucking tsunami. Well, that's a valid point, to be honest, Claire, yeah. 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 If you had a bigger tsunami that did a few countries, more than, well, think that last one did a few, didn't it? You see, they thought they were going to have another the other day, yesterday. Okay. Mm. Yeah, there was a 7.8 earthquake off the coast. They were expecting like a six metre wave, but it ended up being a lot smaller, mm. fortunately. Mm. So yeah, he gets Zerasuda gets off in his boat, survives the flood, and was rewarded with the gods with eternal life, which nice. I suppose doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> the story concludes the hymn to Enki, praising him for his wisdom and his role in creating the world and saving humanity. It's kind of impressive. The Enuma Elish, a younger Mesopotamian one, 12th century BC, or 12,000 years before Christ, is that then? No. 1,200. 1,200 years no. before Christ. Yeah, 12th century. A century's 100 years, yeah. isn't it? 1,200, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a fucking long ass time ago. An ancient Babylonian creation myth about how the world and humans came into being. The myth begins by describing the universe's primordial state, represented by the god Tiamat. The personification of chaos. I'm going to get that on a business card. <laughs> I am the god Tiamat, the personification of chaos. No, just like Ben Carter, the personification of chaos, <laughs> and my phone number and email. Yeah, it doesn't quite have the same ring. You're going to be Tiamat, haven't you? Should I change name? my name to Tiamat? Yeah. <laughs> All right. From this chaos, two other gods emerge. Apsu, the god of fresh water, and his consort... Tiamat, mate. <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> Hung out with him, drank some beers, played some computer games, watched a bit of telly. Sponging up it. <laughs> Apsu and his consort had children who became noisy and disruptive, so Apsu planned to kill them. I'm sure you guys have been there, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> when it says mate, I don't think it meant mate, mate. I think it meant... Like, fuck mate. Yeah. That makes sense. However, his plan was foiled by one of his children, A. Ah, a? A, we'll go with A. Yeah. Ia? Yeah, who killed Apsu instead. Tiamat was outraged by the death of her mate, so she decided to avenge him. Well, so he, uh, Apsu was a chick. Tiamat was a chick. Oh, right. Oh. Interesting. That's fantastic. Strong female woman in a position of power, Claire. Great. The personification of chaos. Personific <laughs> that just kind of sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah. That sums up women. The personification of chaos. Yes. What are you thinking? It's <laughs> quite right. Yeah. Tiamat was outraged by the death of her mate, so she decided to avenge him by creating an army of monsters. <laughs> Again. Is this where the Power Rangers come from? Hell hath no fury like a woman's school. Oh. It's a sound a bit Power Ranger-y, doesn't it? Yeah. You think Power Rangers saves humanity? 
She also created a new consort, King Goom, and gave him the Tablets of Destiny, which gave him the power to control the universe. Lucky bastard. Yeah, that's one hell of a birthday present. <laughs> w- wasn't, wasn't he a little penguin? <laughs> King Goom, not Ping Goom. Oh. <laughs> Although, you know what? If Ping Goom was a god and had the Tablets yeah. of Destiny, you know what? I'm down for it. Yeah. Has anybody seen Ping Goom versus The Thing? No. Oh, it's brilliant. I think I'm... Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to see any harm come to Pingu. This is the issue. I can't remember what it does or not. Don't spoil it. Oh, yeah, it's well. good though. It's on YouTube. Oh, look, it looks funny. Oh, I will have a look. Oh, the, the him. The story ends with a hymn to Marduk. 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 Marduk, praising him for his victory and creation of the world. Apparently, he's one of the high-ranking reptiles. Interesting. Is that from Ike Prince himself? Marduk. Is that from St. Ike? I do that's from. Some lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying David Ike is a lunatic? I thought he was a friend of the show. He is, he's, a, he's a saint he's, of the he's, show. He is. <laughs> but, you know, the company that he keeps with it, he doesn't say much, does it? <laughs> Alex, well, Alex Jones, Jones and Tony Blair. Tony Blair. <laughs> Patron saints of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> No, Pingu gets the Tablets of Destiny. <laughs> uh, no, no delve into antiquity is complete without the Greeks. No one did nudes better than the Greeks. They did do, do some nice paintings, didn't they? Some very tasteful nudes. Nobody did buggery like the Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, because in proper ancient Greece, it was like, let's just go fuck. You can get down with that. If I could go yeah, back man. in time, I wouldn't be selling arms to the Egyptians like me. <laughs> I'd be at the peak of Athens, strutting around in a toga, banging anything I wanted to. You'd be, you know, there'd be a, an army. You'd have to go to war. You know, you'd have to have a job as well. You know, I'd just be rich in Athens. Oh, no, yeah, slaves. Yeah, the slaves. Oh, so you want to be high society? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, you've got to go back in time, Clay. <laughs> you don't go back as a dung peasant, <laughs> do you? You go back as someone who's got a fucking palace and a toga. Oh, do you want the authentic experience? No, I don't want to be covered in shit. <laughs> be a bar wench. <laughs> not, no. not unless that's what's going on that night. <laughs> Come on, Ben. <laughs> You'd be a bar wench. Yeah, why not? <laughs> that's what you want to do. Pete, you can be a bar wench here. Yeah, true, you can, yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to go sell an AK-47. You're just still selling arms <laughs> to the Egyptians. Gun running to the ancient Egyptians <laughs> through time, OK. There's a movie there. <laughs> it's not for the ancient Egyptians, it was for the poor Jews that they persecuted. It was to give them a fighting chance. Free the slaves. Yeah, yeah man. but then if you'd give them the, the AK, if the Jews might take over the whole fucking world. And then we'll have like well, a good to Kanye. <laughs> we'd all be rich. We'd all be rich. They wouldn't share it though, would they? We'd all be Jews, so it wouldn't no. matter. We'd all be rich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite sure there are some poor Jews. I think there might be some faults in your. What happens if the Jews turned you? on the Nazis? What the whole Jew gold thing? Is that just a, <laughs> no. a myth? <laughs> Pete, have you been reading The Prior of the Elders of Zion again? <laughs> <laughs> I've watched the South Park. <laughs> I am joking, clearly. I don't, I don't believe that each, every Jewish person has a little pouch of gold around their neck. Or Anymore. Do, or do they? <laughs> no, God no. Jesus. And I didn't mean that as a, a diss either by saying Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well... Yeah, okay, so at least you're going back to free the slaves. That's something. Mike? Well, I'm obviously going to be hanging out with all the great thinkers of the time. Plato and... Socrates. Yeah. Are they going to want to hang out with you, though? <laughs> 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 they'll they'll have no choice. I'll be a hanger-on. No, what you do is you bring some philosophy back with you from the 20th century. Just pass it off as your own. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some Nietzsche or something. Yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah. What if you got hung or killed because you were knocking around with them being too clever that's true well, Socrates did get forced to commit suicide oh shit yeah All I'll right. come to you hanging on the bar oh, wench oh, thanks 
I'll be one of the guys in the Senate. I'll try and get it stopped. Hopefully, at that point, I'm going to get the fuck out of there. Somehow, uh, oh, I'm you just press the button, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you just get your device and yeah. go back. Oh, or Pete will come along with his AK-47 and shoot the rope. <laughs> <laughs> Not with an AK-47, <laughs> I wouldn't. He's, Fuck hell. No, you just blast in the general direction, something will happen. <laughs> I'd have more chance of taking his head off. <laughs> you probably shoot more birds than that rope, in all fairness. Mm. Uh, Greeks. I like the Greeks. Yeah, I'm not thinking about the Romans, I'm thinking about the Greeks. And then in their creation myth, the creation of the universe is attributed to the primordial deities Chaos, Gaia, the Earth, and Eros, Love. Ah, Chaos, Earth, and Love. According to the myth, Chaos was the universe's initial state, a void of darkness and emptiness, and from Chaos emerged Gaia, who became the personification of the Earth, and Eros, who represented the force of love and attraction. When was a Greek one from, sorry? It's quite old, isn't it? It's still probably old. 3000 to 1100 BC-ish. That's still pretty fucking old. Mm -hmm. Gaia then gave birth to Uranus, the sky, and they became the first divine couple. They had many children, including the twelve titans, the three cyclopses, and the three hectoshares, giants who were 100 arms each. You don't know about Uranus. You don't? <laughs> Uranus, however, was a cruel and domineering father, and he imprisoned the Cyclops and the Hectoshares in Tartarus, the deepest part of the underworld. And then, of course, they had Zeus and all his brothers and sisters, and they overthrew the Titans. Mm. The Egyptians, um, Pete's uh, and mortal enemies, the Egyptians, <laughs> the ancient Egyptians. <laughs> 3,100 to 2,686 BC or thereabouts. It's pretty old. I wasn't around. Now, according to the Egyptian creation myth, the world began as an infinite and lifeless expanse of water known as Nu. And from this water emerged a mound of earth called the Ben Ben. Uh, there we go again. Seen that? I'm pretty sure I've got a caught at this point, then. <laughs> and the god Atom appeared on top of this mound. Atom was the first god, and he created himself by speaking his name into existence. I'm not sure how that works. That's funky. Well, he can't say his name if he's not there, can he? <laughs> Bit of a conundrum, that one, right? Chicken on the egg. No, he was on top of the mound. Yeah, he could have just been sat there just going, at him. No. At him. <laughs> and he's booming. Is he, a, is he a big guy or is he just like a normal sized oh, guy? He's a guard, so I'm guessing That's he's four foot two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his guards are around feet. four foot two, yeah. Look like hobbits, most of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no people there, so who's he talking to? Himself. Oh man, you just got onto oh, a deeper level. No. If there's no one, no one there to hear you, are you actually speaking? If you're deaf and talking, are you actually talking? If a tree falls in the forest, mm. and all that crap. That old yeah. chestnut. That old chestnut, yeah. Crazy. Atom then created the god Shu representing air and Tefnut representing moisture. I like how there's a god who represents moisture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shu and Tefnut gave birth to the earth god Jeb and the sky goddess Nut. <coughs> Nut. Jeb and Nut were lovers, but their father Shu separated them, creating the space and earth. Space between earth and the sky. Presumably he's like, you're not shagging your sister. <laughs> The story explains the origin of the world, the creation of the gods and the relationships between them, an essential part of the ancient Egyptian religion, and it was used to explain the natural phenomena of the world and reinforce Egyptian society's social and political hierarchy. So, you know, like, hey, well, we're, all the pharaohs were descended from the gods, of course, weren't they? Yep. Gave them legitimacy, didn't it? And do what they want, then. Uh, so the oldest one I think we're at now, the Aborigine one called Dreamtime. Wow, 65,000 years ago. That's pretty cool. Mm. Now Dreamtime is a creation myth that is considered to be the oldest and most complex in the world. It is an important part of the culture and belief system of indigenous Australians who have inhabited the continent for over 60,000 years. Now, according to the Dreamtime myth, the world was created by powerful spiritual beings who moved across the land, sea and sky, creating mountains, rivers and animals as they went. 
and these beings were known as the ancestral spirits or ancestors and they created everything that exists today. The dream time is a complex and multifaceted concept that includes stories, ceremonies, rituals and art and is also the basis of the indigenous Australian spiritual and cultural beliefs that continues to influence their lives and worldview today. Very much a people that have been shat on a bit really, yeah. aren't they? The indigenous Australians. And that explains why Aussie gold hunters and there's a, a pair of Aboriginal mm. guys on there and I've seen them and other people on it they've gone to like a landowner who is Aboriginal or has mm. ties to it even and they always say this like incantation prayer kind of thing and they mention the ancestors uh, and I've always thought they just meant like their they're ancestors. fucking lost granddads etc but mm. they actually mean these guys then yeah. that, that makes sense mm. okay well, a lot of the oldest religions are ancestor worship. You're praying to your dead relatives who come before you. So if you have a particularly famous relative, you like your know, great 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 granddad was a king, or something, or done something, you pray to him for guidance. So I pray to Boris, <laughs> Boris Karloff. Yeah. If so, well, I'll pray to Boris Karloff. If they need someone to play Frankenstein and you're up for the casting, then I'd definitely go for it. Right. Yeah. Get the spirit of Try Boris. Try to channel him. <laughs> channel the spirit of Boris. Yeah, yeah. We will do an episode of this very soon. Not not that, but Boris Karloff himself. Will we? there's a good link. Will we now? Yeah. Are you bringing in your family tree? Yep. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> oh, all right, that one is pretty cool. Yeah, the fact that it survived for 65,000 years. Mm. My favourite one's the Greek, because there's more fucking in that. <laughs> Incest. <laughs> There's incest in every creation myth. You go, back, you go back far enough, we're all the product of incest or rape. Or evolution, and we've just, you know, well, you look how many, microbes. how many of us have got Genghis Khan's DNA within us. Mm, you know, it. One in ten, they reckon, I believe it is, or something like that. I'm not sure, but it's still, still pretty fucking good, considering that, you know, he was one dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he had a lot of energy to burn, to get to Genghis. Yeah, I've got it. I've got the dream. <laughs> <laughs> you may well have. Somewhere along the line. Although, maybe one of his gay brothers. Because I don't think Genghis was into cock. <laughs> by and by, the energy. I'm just talking about the energy. Oh, though. right. <laughs> no, I mean, your favourite one's a Greek. I'll go with the Greek. Okay, none. None. Well, I must say it's real. It's my favourite. Oh. My I've got a favourite. My favourite's the Aboriginal. Just the dream, dream time. Dream everything time. just like swirly and. That's playing. my favourite. It's the fluffiest. Nah, it's got to be the Norse. The blood. Yes. The sea made from blood. <laughs> <laughs> Sky made from skull. It's the most metal. Come it on. is the most metal. It's definitely an album cover. Oh yeah. I think the mountains were made out of his bollocks. What was made out of his bollocks? The mountains. <laughs> certainly, a, certainly a couple of them. <laughs> Everest. Yeah, he had big ball energy. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Claire. I was thinking Everest. Yeah. Big ball energy. We got any fucked up facts, Mike? Yeah, if you want. Yeah. Team tune, please. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. Facts, facts, fucked up facts, facts. facts. <laughs> facts! Fuckity fact facts. Go on then, Mike. In a study, people were shown clips of footballers and asked to rate their performance. When the gender of the players wasn't concealed, women's performances were rated much lower. When the players' gender was hidden, women were rated as highly as men. So you're saying there's a bit of a bias going on. How can they rate, how can they hide the gender? Maybe they black out the player. Mm. So you just see a silhouette, I don't know, is it? Weird. Mm. I would like to see the men versus the women. Just see who's better. <laughs> yeah, but imagine being taken out by one of the men. They're just, they're, you know, they're just going to give them a little nudge, aren't they? And oh, you can't, I suppose you can't ask the men to hold back, can you? You want equal rights, don't you? 
Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, that's a very thorny ground there. <laughs> <laughs> a retired Boston University professor named Barbie Oppenheimer. No. <laughs> never. Yeah. Is currently struggling to book hotel rooms. <laughs> Why don't she just put a different name? I mean, her name's probably Barbara, not Barbie. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah. Did anyone do the Barbie Oppenheimer? No, I didn't. I haven't seen either of them. Haven't you? No. Uh, I will watch both of them, though. They're both pretty good, actually. They're not fantastic. Probably I hear, worth a watch. I hear Killian Murphy hangs Dong in Oppenheimer. No. No. Oh. That's bullshit. Fucking hell! So it's just I'm just just watching the. You'd watching be disappointed, it, I'm afraid, if just, you gave him his dong. Just watching it for the nuclear blast, then. Yeah. Did you see much of that? Yeah, of course. Fantastic. No CGI in that film either. They actually let off an A bomb. Never. No, I'm joking. No, no. <laughs> 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 I'm <gonna bullet> <laughs> Peter's just shaking his head at me. <laughs> yeah, you know, don't you? Sometimes I'm just... According to new research, Vlad the Impaler, the inspiration for Dracula, was a vegetarian. Well, I'd like to see that research because there's plenty of <laughs> historical accounts of him quite happily eating a steak and watching people get impaled. I think that might be a... a maybe that might a, be propaganda, mate. The maybe time. it was a tofu what? steak. Yeah. <laughs> think it was corn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was eating a corn chicken steak. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, but I, I still think people are trying to politicise history too much. It could be something like that. Apparently, a fly has just been discovered that can't fly. Oh. What the fuck they couldn't a fly for? Call it a walk? Or a raisin? <laughs> a raisin. <laughs> Not much of a fly. <laughs> Good hell. Names and clues in the name, innit? In France, they have baguette vending machines. Yes. That doesn't surprise me. Hmm. French love a baguette. I love a baguette. I had a Greg sausage and a bacon baguette the other day at work. Oh, I have one then. They're all right. In the spot, they do. Hmm. Breakfast of champions. Greg's baguette. Other baguettes are available. Hmm. They are, but they won't be as nice. Sponsor me, Greg's. Does anyone know how deep the deepest hole is? Is it Mal's Hole that technically has no bottom? Where's that? It's in America somewhere. We'll go to an episode on it soon, Mal's Hole. No, I believe oh, it's a got hole. The, the Mariana Trench, haven't you? Isn't yeah. that one the Russians dug with yeah. went to hell? Yes, we did the episode on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Russians dug this massive hole. Seven and a half miles deep just to find out what was down there. And they load a microphone. Yeah. Alleg well, allegedly lowered a microphone. Yeah. And they heard the sounds of hell. And then Satan came up out of it. <laughs> That's only in some tellings, that. though. <laughs> Which, it? yeah. Something came well, Actually, no, it, 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 quite a few something came up to the hole, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Satan and killed loads of... Oh, that's right. Killed loads of scientists. Scientists, yeah. <laughs> How deep is the Earth's crust? Deep. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably about seven and a half miles, isn't it? The crust. Right, like sixty odd miles. It. Sixty rings a bell. So we didn't even get a quarter of the way through. Nah, there's no digging a tunnel in Australia. I'm sorry to break this to you. Don't just nod your head at me like I'm talking gibberish. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just thought my brain just tried to prove it. Right, you know, you can't go through the mantle, so it's you know, unless you went, mm, you know. You'd have to go around the core too. Oh, yeah. And be wearing some kind of suit. Yeah, it's not going to work, is it? It's going to be fucking up there, isn't it? Yeah. A vital part of the mixing of ocean waters comes from huge masses of anchovies having sex. Uh, <laughs> do what? <laughs> Say again. A vital part of the mixing of the ocean waters comes from huge masses of anchovies mm. having sex. Cool. What, so storms are caused by anchovy no, no, gangbang? Storms. You know, the mixing of the currents and that. Yeah, well, if there's a particularly violent gangbang, does that cause 
heavier waves. I don't think it's causing the waves, it's just causing the mixing yeah. of the cold water coming from the north and the south into the sort of like the, the water in the middle that's, you know, on the uh, equator. Because you can physically see a line where the oceans mix, can't you? There's yeah, a yeah. darker colour of the, yeah. the northern waters and the southern the southern waters are lighter coloured. And, and it sort of goes round the planet yeah. and in different, you know. So it's all down to anchovies. Not all down to anchovies, <laughs> but obviously a significant part, you know. So, the crust can be thicker than 80 kilometres in some spots and less than one kilometre thick in others. Interesting. Underneath it lies the mantle layer of the silicate rock that is approximately 2,700 kilometres thick. Oh, so they didn't even make it less than them. Seven miles. They, uh, they, they made it maybe maybe quarter of a way through the skin because the skin is the, like the equivalent to an apple skin on an apple. That's like the relativity to yeah. it. So if you see how thin that is in comparison to the rest of it, that's about what the world crust, uh, crust right. is. So. So. And then it goes rock hard underneath that bit. 2,700 kilometres. And then obviously you've got then the the central ball bit, which is, I don't know, can't find that bit, but that doesn't matter really. I thought it was iron. We all know it's hell. Well, it's hell. It's it's hell. Sil silicate. Silicate? Something like that. Silicate, I think it's called. Cool, said, oh, yeah, oh. there you go. Boom. Okay, final fact: some plants grow leaves that look similar to nearby plants, but since they do not have any way to see, scientists don't know how. So plants copy other plants' style. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I haven't seen them do that. Grow more plants. Maybe it's a genetic thing and their roots touch or something, or... That's interesting, I like that idea. Yeah, they, they know now, don't they, that there's, they're all connected underground and they, they will help each other if, if someone's sick or attacked or something. Something to do with that, obviously. Yeah. 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 Wow. Gaia. Gaia at work, clearly. The Greeks were right. <laughs> and I'm a bombshell. I mean, Ben, don't drink the flavour aid. Don't join a cult, even if it's mine. <laughs> Especially if it's yours. I mean, Mike, thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. I and think... I'm not in a cult. <laughs> <laughs> what about if I offer you a cushy bishop number? I'm saying the Jedi is not a cult. Oh, the Jedi is not a cult. The Jedi are a massive cult. Sorry, mate. And I've been fair. Thanks for listening. Keep open mind, but not so open that it spills out your ears, guys. I've been beat, everyone have a nice week, take care. You steal children! <laughs> <laughs>